Hey everyone, this is Persia from Team Broken Tier and welcome to Marvel Mimes. This episode will be from First Attack 2015, held in beautiful Puerto Rico. Marvel Grand Finals between Chris G and Takumi were by far some of the best Marvel matches we've seen in a while. By the end of it, you had an entire ballroom of spectators on their feet cheering or in utter disbelief. It was that close. And it was that close for a reason. Chris G and Takumi had played in winner's finals, where Takumi won over Chris 3-1. to He reminded us all just how scary level 3 Virgil can be, and made getting into the match nearly impossible with his ambiguous round trip mix-ups. However, what put in the most work for Takumi in Grand Finals was Magneto. He's one of the few Magneto players I've seen to effectively use Tiger Knee Disruptors. Not only that, but he does a great job of sniping Morgan during the startup of Astral Vision. Although this doesn't do much damage, it shaves off a solid second of Marvel time from her super, which means one less second stuck in Soul Fist. This actually gives Magneto some even playing field when Morgan is not in Astral Vision. This, accompanied by missiles, give Takumi some much needed options. So let's get to the match. Game 1 starts and both players cross sides. Christy is quick to get Astral started, but Takumi snipes him out with Disruptor. Chris takes to the sky to get some soul fist backup and a good break helps Takumi get away, but he falls right into Morgan's standing light. A drop from Chris gets Takumi out of danger, but Chris blocks and doesn't fall for the frame trap of Takumi's delayed string. After he confirmed the hit of the B is when he push blocked. If he had push blocked too early, he would have whiffed a button on accident and gotten hit on the startup. Now that the neutral has reset, Takumi shows some good instances with Disruptor again, but when he tries to fight in the air, he can't land a solid hit. He ends up falling into a ton of chip, eventually losing Magneto. He even wasted a bar trying to DHC out safely, but Chris leaves no gaps between his projectile pressure and missiles hit the startup of Shockwave. Chris lands the meaty light into a little bit of damage before Doom gets away, but as Takumi tries to spend most of his time in the air to avoid Soul Fist, he ends up taking a lot of damage from missiles. The one opportunity that he did have to DHC safely into Virgil, he misses and loses Doom. Morgan had no meter, which is why Chris started to pressure Doom more when he noticed Takumi was staying on the ground. Next, Chris throws a super meaty Soul Fist and dashes forward. Although it looks like the Soul Fist was thrown way too early, this is actually what hits Virgil first. Whatever button Takumi tried to press was clipped by the tail end of Soul Fist, which closes out the game for Chris. Game 2 starts with Chris being very aggressive and staying on Magneto. Takumi blocks and finds a clear path to gain some space. His movement gets better and better throughout the set. Keeping up with the momentum he's gaining, he chases down the recovery on the Disruptor hit and picks up a combo off of the scramble. He manages to get Morgan out of the game early with the DHC, but he's playing way too well not to bring back in Magnus. He sneaks in the cross under launch on Doom, takes a bit of damage, and then snaps in the real issue, level 3 Virgil. Missiles stop Virgil from killing Magneto and this is huge for Takumi. He continues to use his mobility to stay away from Virgil and blocks at all of the right times. He finally lands a punish on Chris after he whiffs the standing B and the game starts going exactly how Takumi wants it. He spins the X Factor to get rid of Virgil and leaves level 3 Doom by himself. Instead of Takumi putting himself in danger, he backs off and uses the rest of his X Factor time to poke Doom and manage the space. Chris finally finds an opening to use a meter for an X Factor confirmed to take down Mag. A delayed push block pushes Chris away, but it doesn't keep him out for long. Another important break keeps Takumi alive as he's able to get an air-to-air -air medium confirm into a level 3 to tie the set. Game 3 starts full screen apart, giving Chris early freedom to astral vision. Takumi continues to show off his mobility, but gets a little too comfortable trying to evade and gets his feet clipped once Chris pins him down. Chris gets as much damage as he can before knocking him down and setting up astral vision again. Takumi waits for the correct time to jump and get out of the corner, but missiles still prove to be annoying and he's running out of health to spare. Realizing this, Takumi hard tags into Doom but ends up losing a ton of life for that decision and doesn't really find any opportunities to get an advantage. Doom is still on the move but Chris still has the screen covered. Takumi accidentally backdashes with Doom and loses a chunk of life. This also interrupts his escape plan and gives Chris the perfect chance to get rid of Doom. At this point, we know that Takumi's plink dashing is on point, however he dashes right into missiles and it puts him right back into the soul fists. He's able to DHC into Virgil and this changes the pace of the match. Chris switches from soul patterns to soul rushdown seamlessly to try to contain Virgil. One good standing age or launch could catch Morgan, so Chris tries not to give him the right space to do so. 
Chris punishes the startup of Helmbreaker with a smart launch and has missiles following right behind. Since Takumi eats the missiles, Chris has enough time to flood the ground with projectiles. Takumi calls Magneto while using S to get to the ground fast and uses Mag as a shield to eat some of the soul fists. He has plenty of time to safely X-Factor, but instead of blocking, he tries to use Standing Light and Chris G punishes with a Shell Kick to close out Game 3. Another full screen start in Game 4 and Chris immediately goes for Astral and gets sniped. You'll notice some changes in Takumi's Magneto in this game. It looks like he took a second to calm down and play a more patient style. This is a huge improvement from the previous game and it prevents him from taking any unnecessary damage. Takumi continues to show how well Disruptor can be used in this matchup, especially with missiles. He also does a great job at calculating where the Soul Fists are and finding the safest places on the screen to be. Another big improvement from the previous games. Picking and choosing his spots to even apply pressure is really well spaced. The fact that he could switch from a fast-paced, dash-happy playstyle to a patient and calculated maneuverability in just one game goes to show how versatile Takumi can be. It looks like the change in pace might have taken Chris by surprise too, because Takumi manages to win the point war. Knowing Chris is going to want to save more again, and he doesn't have any meter to DHC, Takumi stays on the ground and waits for the hard tag punish. This is a huge break for Takumi as he's able to take out Virgil with a level 3 and still has plenty of resources to work with. Next, Takumi waits as late as possible and gets the super jump cross up tri dash heavy. Missiles make this mix up deadly as he's able to get a full confirm to take out Doom. Only Morgan is left and she has X Factor on deck. She's a lot less scary without missiles, but she can still be a problem all on her own. Takumi tries to outrun Morgan and gets Chris to spin his X Factor to avoid Disruptor. A clutch unfly keeps Chris alive and avoids shockwave, and now it's up to Takumi to try and drain as much X Factor time as possible. He's purely evading and not calling assists, which is smart because a few of those soul fists could mean death for any assist character. Mag is down, and Chris still has enough X Factor time to make something happen against Doom. Takumi is staying consistent with his evasion, but Chris finally finds the perfect time to push Doom to the corner and lands the hit with a shell kick. Level 3 Virgil is left, and all it takes is for Takumi to make it into the match. Once he gets in safely, he strings up Morgan into X Factor and has plenty of meter to chip her out to bring the set to 2 2. The final game starts, and Takumi is still consistent with the snipes. He annoys Chris a bit with disruptors and beautifully moves through the Soul Fist to chip away at Morgan's health. Takumi manages to stay on top of Chris and catches Morgan on the scramble, giving Takumi the early kill on Morgan. This is a great start for Takumi because his Magneto is healthy and he has a lot of resources to work with again. Chris G has Doom with just under 2 meters coming in next. He survives on incoming with some good defense and fights it out long enough to get 2 bars for the DHC. DHCing into Virgil makes the fight a little better for him against Magneto. Virgil with backup from Doom missiles can do fairly well in this fight with proper spacing and being sure to approach safely when missiles are on the screen. Magneto can smother Virgil if you give him the freedom, so missiles help neutralize some of Magneto's offense. Chris teleports right as Takumi tries to disrupt her, giving him an accidental hyper grab that Chris can punish. However, Takumi has missiles of his own which prevent either side from getting anything started. Takumi brings in Doom and wastes the remaining Devil Trigger time on Virgil. He's also trying his best to take his time and play it smart by being mindful of throws and blocking. Although Chris lands quite a few hits, missiles interrupt him time and time again. Chris finally gets Takumi to block missiles on the ground and opens up Doom low to bring the match back to a 2 on 2. No tricking incomings from Chris because he knows he needs to keep Virgil alive. They both have X Factor and the next solid hit could decide the match. Chris tries to punish the Magnetic Blast and pops X-Factor, but Takumi follows suit to keep Magneto alive. Takumi goes for a crouching B after canceling the Guard Stun with X-Factor, which is why Virgil was still able to hit him. If he had gone for an L instead, he could have hit the startup of Virgil's H. It's also possible that Takumi tried to push block, and the L to H Virgil frame trap punished it even through the X-Factor. This gets Chris to kill on Magneto. Takumi successfully blocks the tricky Virgil cross-up and delays the push block on missiles to help him auto-guard the rapid slash. This is similar to immediately push blocking Shockwave up close to get through the plasma. Chris continues to string up Takumi and lands a few stray hits, but a bad Doom call helps Takumi score some free damage on Doom, and he safely gets his swords up. Chris blocks and follows Takumi with his far-reaching normals to catch Takumi off guard and gets some good damage. Chris smartly goes for swords to try and set up Takumi for a hit that can seal the kill, but Takumi is keeping calm and blocking everything. This really goes to show how much he knows this character. 
Now that Chris is out of meters, Takumi knows it's his turn to make something happen. With Swords Up, he gets more free damage on Doom and even gets the chance to kill Virgil while he's at it. No bar for either side and it's down to the very last hit and only 10 seconds left on the clock. Chris survives using some good evasion techniques with flight and foot dive and also using nicely timed push blocks to avoid getting chipped by judgment cut. Chris's normal jump tricks Takumi into thinking he was going for a super jump as he tries to follow, but this just sets him up to land into a perfectly timed plasma beam from Chris and it leaves him at a pixel. Takumi tries to close the gap fast, only to get grabbed by Chris to end one of the best grand finals we've seen in a long time. Chris G has definitely been on fire recently, so watching how close these sets were was really exciting. Takumi is a rising threat in Marvel and these sets proved it. I'm really looking forward to seeing more from both of these guys in the future as they keep on showing us how entertaining Marvel can be. With that said, being able to partner up with Spooky is absolutely amazing and we can't wait to bring you some awesome Marvel content. I want to remind all of you to tune into the Marvel Live podcast every first and third Tuesday at 9pm Eastern Standard Time only on twitch.tv slash team spooky. Our podcast goes over everything Marvel and will keep you up to date on the recent events, news, and more. Be sure to like and subscribe to Team Spooky as well so you can always know when another Marvel Minds is released. Thanks for tuning in. Peace, guys.